Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetist, brought to you by Aaron Abraham, Jana Asoff, Justin Baird, and Annie Benjamin. Many associate degree nurses, also known as ADNs, seek to advance their career to the next level. This next step in the nursing career is known as the Bachelor's of Science in Nursing, commonly known as BSN. Beyond this, nurses also have other options. What we will be dealing with today is known as Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetists, also known as CRNAs. These nurses tend to work in the operating room or in special procedures rooms. So many nurses do advance to the next level because it is a challenging career. Nurses have to pay great attention to detail at this job. It also comes with a certain level of respect given the high level of education that it requires amongst nurses and nurses are also compensated very well for this position. According to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, CRNAs are among the highest paid nurses and there is expected to be no shortage of demand either. Between the year 2016 and 2026, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, they report an expected 16% increase in job demand for CRNAs. Years of experience for a CRNA includes the following. A minimum of one year full-time work experience or its part-time equivalency as a registered nurse in a critical care setting. The average experience of RNs in a nurse anesthetist educational program is 2.9 years. Education for CRNA. Nurse anesthetists are prepared at master's level or higher, accredited by the Council of Accreditation of Nurse Anesthesia Educational Programs which also administers the certification examination. A bank, bank of art or a graduate degree in nursing or, or the appropriate majors. Nurse anesthesia programs range for, from 24 to 42 months, depending on the university requirements. Programs include clinical settings and experiences, Graduates of nurse anesthesia programs have an average of 8,636 hours of clinical experience. On average, it takes a minimum of seven to eight and a half years of education and experience to prepare a CRNA. CRNA licensure, the Florida Nurse Practice Act states the following. Any nurse desiring to be certified as an advanced registered nurse practitioner shall apply to the department and submit proof that he or she holds a current license to practice professional nursing and that he or she meets one of the following requirements. Florida RA licensure can be obtained through examination or by endorsement. A CRNA receives an unencumbered license as a registered professional nurse or APRN in the United States or its territories. CRNA certification. The National Board of Certification and Recertification for Nurse Anesthetists is the certifying body that administers the National Certification Examination. Each graduate of the Nurse Anesthesia and Educational Program must pass the National Certification Examination before he or she can be certified as a CRNA. CRNA. More than 2,400 student registered nurse anesthetists graduate each year and go on to pass the National Certification Examination and become CRNAs. Certification is voluntary and grants recognition to a person who has met specified qualifications. Certification is also intended to protect the public by enabling the identification of competent people. The major responsibilities of CRNAs involve administering anesthesia in order to safely sedate and revive patients. 
In order for CRNAs to safely do this, they must assess the patient's illnesses, allergies, and conditions. This may include the last time the patient ate or drank, any previously used medications, assessing the patient's lung sounds, in pediatric populations also checking for loose teeth. The CRNA must administer and adjust these medications according to the patient's condition. This must be done before, during, and after the procedure. The nurse anesthetist may also be involved in pain control for patients. It is their job to determine how much pain medication a patient can safely tolerate while they are recovering from anesthesia. The American Association of Nurse Anesthetists is a professional organization started back in 1931. It currently represents over 50,000 CRNAs. They have 11 standards of practice and they are as follows. One, performing and documenting a pre-anesthesia evaluation and assessment. Two, obtaining the proper consent. Three, formulating an anesthesia plan. Four, implementing and adjusting that plan based on the patient's conditions. Five, monitoring and evaluating and documenting the patient's conditions. And six, documenting any pertinent anesthesia-related information, such as malignant hyperthermia. Seven, determining when it is safe to transfer the patient. Eight, administering to, well, adhering to any safety precautions. Nine, verifying that infection control protocols are in place. Ten, participating in any ongoing reviews related to the patient and their care. And eleven, respecting the basic rights of the patient. The next part of the presentation is the impact of certified registered nurse anesthetists upon the nursing profession. The first topic is nursing shortage. If there is a CRNA shortage, this could limit access to high quality care even when there is a growing demand for surgical and interventional procedures for an aging population. The Bureau of Labor and Statistics Job Outlook predicts a 31% growth over the next decade, which is a much higher rate of growth than many other occupations in the medical field and other industries across the United States. However, they included in this prediction the nurse anesthetists, midwives, and practitioners. The Nurse Journal also predicted a 31% growth rate. They stated this may be due to many factors, one of which revolves around the fact that there will always be a need for pain relief in the field of medicine. Next, the high paying income is also a driving factor. Finally, the shortage of nursing staff across the country has caused this position to be a highly sought after role. The American Association of Nurse Anesthetists published a study on the predicted changes in supply and demand of nurse anesthetists in Florida. The study predicted a CRNA surplus in Florida, but this was dependent on several factors. The first factor that creates an unknown effect on CRNA supply is the planned move to the requirement of Doctor of Nursing Practice, or CRNAs. This is planned to be in effect by 2022. Another factor is the oversupply of CRNA in Florida. Florida saw an increase in CRNA schools from three to nine, and an increase in graduates from 46 to 252. Population changes affect the supply and demand. Florida's population will increase by 3.3 million between 2012 and 2025. Last, the predicted CRNA surplus in Florida is dependent on current staffing models and restriction by federal and state in their physician supervision regulations. If there is an anesthesiologist shortage, this could lead to substitution of anesthesiologists by CRNAs. The last factor that could influence supply and demand is changes to supervision restriction. The next topic is nursing outcomes. A national study proved that there are no differences in patient outcomes when anesthesia services are provided by CRNAs 
physician anesthesiologist, or CRNA supervised by a physician. This study examined nearly 500,000 cases and confirmed that CRNAs provide safe, high quality care, and the care is equal regardless of supervision. CRNAs administer more than 30 million anesthetics annually. The practice of anesthesia has become safer in recent years due to improvements in pharmacological agents and the introduction of sophisticated technology. Studies have shown a dramatic reduction in anesthesia mortality rate to approximately one per 250,000 anesthetics. The three most common anesthesia accidents are lack of oxygen supplied to the patient, intubation into the esophagus rather than the trachea, and disconnection of oxygen supply to the patient. All these accidents result from lack of attention to monitoring the patient, not lack of education. The next topic is healthcare reform. The Affordable Care Act added 8 million newly insured individuals, and this put a strain on the healthcare system's ability to provide anesthesia care because many of these previously uninsured individuals will seek surgical procedures. There is a demand for cost-effective and high-quality care for citizens. CRNAs as the sole anesthesia provider are the most cost-effective model. There is a misconception that most states require some level of physician involvement in the delivery of anesthesia care. The truth is that 40 states do not require physician supervision of CRNAs in nursing or medical board regulations. 17 states have opted out from the Medicare requirement for physician supervision of CRNAs. And Medicare does not require anesthesiologist involvement in CRNA only cases. Next is healthcare economics. As discussed earlier, the outcome data supports the safety and cost effectiveness of the delivery of anesthesia care by CRNAs. A victory for nurse anesthetists was in 2013, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services ruled that Medicare administrators should reimburse CRNAs for chronic pain management services if they are within the CRNA scope of practice. A few financial points are CNAs are less costly to train than anesthesiologists. Also, the CRNAs receive less compensation than anesthesiologists. The hospitals receive significant financial compensation from Medicare for each physician resident they train, yet they receive no federal funding for advanced practice student training. Medicare also reimburses 100% when an anesthesiologist is training a physician resident on a case, but only 50% when it is a CRNA. Last, barriers still exist for nurse anesthetists regarding Medicare reimbursement. CRNAs are required to work under physician supervision for reimbursement of Medicare Part A, unless the state governor opts out of this requirement. Next, Justin will pre present. My name is Justin Beard, and I'm going to first start off talking about evidence-based practice anesthesia uh, provided by CRNAs. Uh, the AANA, uh, they're continually applying an evidence-based process as far as making uh, documents and guidelines for uh, CRNAs throughout the United States to follow. So typically what they're looking is that they're looking at um, previous uh, journals and scholarly works and, and studies in regard to uh, overall anesthesia practice by CRNAs throughout the U.S. and sometimes internationally as well. And through, those, um, through that research, they develop these guidelines and resources and documents that will help uh, with the practice in the, in the facility. So they'll look at things such as, um, such as um, propofol uh, securement to prevent any sort of diversion, um, protecting patients uh, overall as far as uh, recovery and as well as uh, employee protection uh, from sharps uh, when uh, administering anesthesia in the facility. Uh, they cover a broad spectrum of different areas just overall to make anesthesia safe for the employees 
as well as the, the patient undergoing anesthesia for the procedure. Next, we'll go ahead and look at legal issues. We're going to talk about the CMS, uh, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, uh, regulations and guidelines. As far as a CMS uh, regulation and guidelines, uh, the CRNA, the nurse anesthetist, is to be supervised by the operating physician unless the governor of the facility, uh, the governor in the state of the facility in which the nurse anesthetist works in, uh, writes a letter to CMS uh, opting out of uh, the CRNA having to be supervised during uh, uh, providing anesthesia. Uh, before the governor can do that first, they have to consult uh, with the Board of Medicine as well as the Board of ne uh, Nursing in that particular state to uh, opt out of having uh, the CRNA at that facility uh, being supervised during uh, providing anesthesia. So going underneath uh, legal issues continued, uh, to supervise or not, um, anesthetists, a nurse anesthetists, uh, they provide uh, anesthesia independently in uh, several states. Uh, they're continually uh, growing to become more uh, autonomous. Um, I know at a lot of the healthcare, uh, medical health, uh, healthcare facilities that are military based, a lot of them, uh, the CRNA is able to practice independently as well as some rural areas. Uh, one thing is, uh, one thing however, um, though they may not have independence or the independent ability to practice in all states, they, uh, CRNAs are able to at least practice anesthesia in all 50 states, though some of them they will need to be supervised for. And this right here, this is just a CRNA uh, independence map in which a nurse anesthetist are allowed to uh, actually uh, practice independently and um, prescribe. With the blue, uh, the blue states here, you can see that those are states that do not require supervision and they do have a uh, prescribing power. As, and over here on the red states, the red states are the states that um, do require supervision. So uh, with uh, becoming an uh, independent provider of anesthesia, there's a certain amount of liability that comes with that because you're no longer practicing underneath a physician. Uh, you don't have the anesthesiologist over you, nor do you have uh, this uh, physician uh, car carrying out the surgical intervention um, to supervise you. So with that, if you're practicing independently, you will need a malpractice insurance. And then there are two primary types of malpractice insurance. We have occurrence coverage as well as claims made coverage. And with occurrence coverage, if, um, if an incident happens within uh, the time frame that the policy is held, then it will be covered. And that's the more ideal type of coverage, but that's not provided in all states. Uh, then we have claims made coverage where um, if, an, if an occurrence or incident happens, uh, a claim needs to be filed while that policy is held, otherwise uh, that occurrence isn't covered. And then they have some things, um, uh, tails, which can actually extend the amount of time in which you can file if, you're, if your policy is already terminated. But um, hopefully no one has to worry about any of those issues as of yet. Next though, let's look at the quality of uh, the care provided by the CRNA. I know we already did uh, do a reference to the, the lease in Cromwell from 2010. Uh, this is a little bit outdated. It does say that CRNAs providing care um, showed no difference to that of the care provided by the anesthesiologist, that there wasn't any increased risk to uh, patients and that outcomes were relatively the same. Um, that it was dated from 2010, so it is a little bit more outdated. Um, we were able to find a more recent study in 2014 where Lewis, Nicholson, Smith, and Alderson, where they were actually unable to find any definitive statement as far as superiority uh, among both anesthesia providing groups. They weren't able to find um, substantial evidence showing whether CRNAs provided better anesthesia care or whether anesthesiologists provided uh, better anesthesia care. So the results are still inconclusive to show that one provides better care than the other. And looking at quality of CRNA uh, care continued, uh, perception of CRNAs among anesthesiologists. So Logvinov, as well as uh, Franklin, last year in 2017, uh, they had some anesthesiologists from the Mayo Clinic, and they went to the University of Iowa, and then what they did is they looked at, they had a, a set standard of the minimum expectation of um, 
work competencies and expectations of CRNAs, and only 2.6% fell below the minimum standard of what these anesthesiologists thought substantial enough as far as uh, work habits and uh, care provided. So uh, we all know how prestigious the Mayo Clinic is, so this is just showing that it was a very low percentage of uh, CRNAs um, that didn't provide the, the minimal uh, work ethic and uh, care that, uh, in regard to uh, how the anesthesiologist perceived, perceived that. So in conclusion, um, the practice of nursing is continually growing. Um, it's no longer bedside nursing anymore. There are, various, uh, there are various jobs in which you can get as a nurse and you can continually grow with your education as well. The scope of practice is continually growing on. You have nursing informatics, nursing management. You can become the director of, uh, of a big unit or multiple units. Um, you can become an advanced practicing nurse working in pediatrics, uh, family practice. You can be a first assist helping the surgeon in the OR. Uh, you can work in geriatrics, psych. You can practice anesthesia. Um, it's continually growing. You don't even have to work in the clinical setting. You can do things out of the clinical setting. You can do dermatology. Um, nursing is growing as well as the demand. It's continually growing. Um, nurses are retiring and uh, we need new nurses and people are still getting sick and the population is increasing. So there will always be a demand for nursing. But looking at the CRNA path, um, if you have any interest in providing anesthesia or if you've been to the OR before and you just want to be right beside the table and you like the procedures that go on in there and you like to observe and watch, then this might be the job for you. Not necessarily just OR too, even, uh, in, even in a clinical setting outside of the hospital, um, if you're going into a procedural clinic such as a place that does uh, uh, EGDs or anything of that nature, then you can provide anesthesia care there too. But, um, if you just like to watch procedures being done and help out with that, this may be the job for you. We're, we're um, the operating physician or uh, the surgeon is conducting the surgical intervention. You're there sitting at the, at the table side uh, maintaining uh, the patient hemodynamically. You're making sure that all their vitals are right, that while they're undergoing the procedure, they're actually asleep and they aren't able to feel any sort of pain. You're maintaining them hemodynamically while they're asleep and ensuring that you're managing them with adequate amounts of sedation. So you're there making sure they're alive through the process as well as making sure that they're able to wake up after the process. So if you want to challenge yourself and you want growth financially, because it, it pays very well, if you want growth financially, if you want growth intellectually, because you're constantly going to challenge yourself and you have to know a lot being in the OR, because a lot of bad things can happen but if you want to grow intellectually as well, and even compassionately, this may be the route for you. Um, seeing the patient before they have a surgical procedure done, doing a history, physical, anesthesia questionnaire, kind of go, going over what the surgeon may be uh, doing in the OR, and then uh, seeing the patient as they wake up from the procedure. There's a lot of growth and a lot of potential for you to grow as a person through this route. So, if um, if any of those things uh, spark your interest, this may be the route for you. And these are just our references. Thank you.